Hey everybody, what's up? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll re be reviewing WWE's SummerSlam 2024 with the main event of Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa. Uh, this, this was not a bad pay-per-view. Wasn't a bad pay-per-view. Uh, I like, you know what, here, here, let, me, let me explain something real quick, real quick. Uh, when I do this review, there's a lot of predictions that I made during because I get tired of the boring hackneyed stuff. And when I'm wrong, I don't wear it like, oh no, I'm going to lose cred. They're not going to listen to me. No, when I'm wrong, there's hope. There's hope. That's, that's, that's the beauty of it. Being wrong means there's hope. You know, I'm no authoritarian. I'm like, look, if I'm wrong, then there's hope. So let's roll with this, all right? Because I want to shoot through this and stuff. I don't know, I'm get, starting to get kind of tired. It's 5.27 p.m., August 5th. You know, so, so yeah, let's, let's get into this for those that are still around. So we start off with the women's world title match. Rhea Ripley versus um, Liv Morgan with Dominic Mysterio in Rhea's corner. And... I was like, something ain't right with this. Because the way Dom and Rhea look, I was like, um, there's there's no way y'all ain't doing something extra. There's, there's just no way. This, this ain't going to look right. This is a conservative company. You know, this, this, we know Rhea's a married woman now. And Dom, he, he's, he's got his, you know, 1970s porn mustache going. He's trying to be a little bit of Burt Reynolds and, and a little bit of Eddie Guerrero at one point. You know, that's what he's... And he's failing. He's failing. Just just grow the whole thing out or cut it all off. Because this this is terrible. You know, you, you look... He almost looked like the Hispanic Ned Flanders. That's what it's starting to look like. So, let's see. They got ref cam for some reason. I don't even know if they used it at all. Through the whole event, I'm like, okay, I guess you want everyone to see what the refs see, and I'm like, we see what the refs see, and the ref don't see much. <laughs> the ref takes his cues from the back. So this is a one-sided match, and then just before the finish, Liv counters and sends uh, Ripley into the corner for the shoulder angle. Oh boy, here we go, because they were talking about her shoulder, they hyped it up, and I was like, yeah. When they're going to do the whole shoulder angle and then she's going to not be able to fight and then she's going to get the shoulder somehow fixed. Someone's going to pull it back in or she's going to slam it into something and then, whoa, I'm like, come on, let's get on with it. You know, and Ripley shouts that it's out and Liv can be on offense for a while until the shoulder can be fixed and Ripley wins. That's what I wrote. Don pushes Ripley out of the way, and much later, Liv dives into it. It was like, shove out the way, one, two. Oh, he got hit. I'm like, what? how long did it take you to make the choice to, to dive on him? Ripley pops her shoulder back in on the announce table. Liv goes for a counter, goes uh, back into counter wrestling. They had a great struggle on the mat with Ripley blocking an armbar. I thought that was, that was like, to me, the highlight of the match. That was the highlight of the match. I, I liked that so much. Um, Liv got a chair. Ripley knocked it from her hands. Ripley gets the chair. Dom takes it from her for her own good. Uh, Liv knocks her. Uh, knocks Liv. Liv knocks Rhea onto Dom. And then hits her finish for a two count. Dom distracts the ref. Liv hit her finish on the chair. Got the win. Glad I was wrong. I, I, I knew Rhea was going to win. I was like. It makes no sense for her to win because Liv hadn't done anything. But, ah, well, you know, I was like, Rhea, you know, with the makeup and stuff on, she looks really attractive. So, I'm like, if you want to go on attractiveness, you got to give it to, to Rhea. It just makes sense. So, then Dom helps Liv up and then kisses her. Logically, he can't keep pretending with a known married woman. We know she's married to her buddy. So, there you go. Now he can move on. Rhea can be upset. She can have more storyline with Liv. 
Don can be like, I needed a real woman. I needed to be with a champion. They can do that kind of thing. Everyone can be happy. I wrote, now Rhea, yeah, Rhea uh, Ripley can be a real baby face. Liv can be a legit heel instead of a heel because Rhea is loved. In the back, Priest wants to find Dom. He questions everybody in the Judgment Day, uh, wondering if they knew what was going on. He eyes Finn, who takes offense and raises the guilt in Damien. Okay. Intercontinental title match. Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. I watched it. I liked it. And it went the way it should. It's, it's, it's really that simple. It was a decent match. And Braun looked as he is. Dominant. He hit a counter spear. Then the double rebound spear. Pin. Got the win. New champ. Let's see how well he's going to be with it. Uh, and look, I, Braun looks good. I like what he do. He does a lot. His dad and his uncle is a massive influence, but he, he, he got his dad's body. He ain't got Scott's. That's all Rick. The older he get, the more like Rick he going to look. And they need to change his damn name to Braun Steiner. Or Bronson Steiner. Yeah, that sounds better. Bronson Steiner. Yeah. So now we got the US title match. No, this match ending was spoiled while half listening to people on a different Discord channel. So it's good. Okay, Logan Paul versus LA Knight. LA Knight has an awesome intro. Yeah. <sighs> Yawning. Sorry. Sorry about that. I'm tired. Um, L.A. Knight won his gear is awesome I like that he busted in the truck and all that um, I'm not going to say this I'm going to be straight up if Logan Paul wasn't a detestable person he'd be my favorite wrestler I'm going to keep it real with you if he wasn't a detestable piece of gutter snipe trash he'd be my favorite wrestler but he is a walking troll and I don't care for him or anything about him. But this match was freaking phenomenal. I'm not even going to lie about it. Champion comes out first for some reason. Yeah. Allegedly, Knight was ramming Paul's head into the announce table, but Paul's head had to have been damn near a full foot from it. Just slamming his hands on it. His head, his head probably got just above elbow and that was about it I was like you know y'all failed at this part you should have went down low teased it you know or you could do what some of the wrestlers did back in the day which is they would their hands would go down first yes I am yawning way too much their hands would go down first and their head would they would target their thumbs with the side of their head or their forehead with their head tucked so it would look better. That's what they used to do. I don't know why they don't do it anymore. Maybe, maybe too much risk, maybe sharp things that I couldn't see on the table. I don't know. But I think it would have been better to go all the way down uh, with your hands protecting your head. It, you know, it's, it would be obvious, but it wouldn't be this obvious with your head being a foot away from the table. Anyway, Knight hit a net break on the table. It did not collapse, so it looked brutal. And then the bell rings. They can go and fight. They had a good match. They had a damn good... It was a classic match. Matter of fact, you know, look, I didn't take notes on it and stuff. I didn't. Um, Logan performed brilliant. Knight performed brilliant. This match, to me, would go into those... Old school Ric Flair classic level matches. I really, I really do think this match was that good. This was an easy, I'll say four and a half stars. It lacked a few things and some urgency to be five star. 
but it had a, a decent little kind of cute build up but the match itself was just damn good Knight wins with the BFT or Snapmail Driver and got the pin and I've noted now Paul can go back to YouTube only don't want to see him in wrestling or you better yet put him on, on Raw because I don't watch Raw I'm, I've been getting tempted but three hours and sorry for the dead air y'all keep yawning but three hours and it's um not 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 too many people up there I don't know three hours show and not many no I don't know about that so now we get the uh, women's title match Nia Jax versus Bailey. Yeah. So Nia did the bonsai drop safely this time. It was for a two count. But it was safe. It was a long match. And it was a damn good match. And then Tiffany comes out and gets knocked off the apron. Jax hit a counter power bomb and then a jackknife power bomb. Jax hit two bonsai drops for the three count. And he looked really good to me. There was urgency, worry, pain, guts, and the finishing touch. I thought I thought it was a good match. Nia seemed safe. I, I, I didn't see anything bad about anything. She didn't do that bonsai drop or annihilator and just crash onto the, uh, onto the abdomen. And then when she did the, the back-to-back ones, that was really good. So, I... You know, it's, with some people, once you get the hate on, they ain't going to turn it off. I understand, because you don't want to get let down. You don't want to get let down, so I get it. I get it. Um, I'm not a Nia Jax fan. Don't even, don't even, don't, don't even get it twisted. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to, I, I really don't care to watch a wrestle. I, I just, I'd just rather skip it. Okay, so we got a special referee match. Seth Rollins. Referee the match between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. And you think this would be the culmination of a lot of work. And no. No. It is not. It is not. So, I, damn bug hit me. Okay. The bug in here and it hit me on each ear. It's, it's, it's trying to box me. I'm going to lose this fight because I got to do the recording. So, um, the opening of this match is a classic five, uh, you know, the classic five counts and no DQ. Count all the way to five, but no DQ. Did it twice. Rev tries to establish dominance, but is not adhered to. Okay. Rev relaxes while they fight outside the ring. Uh, this is good because Rollins got beef with both of them. Passive aggressive damage. And I was typing out while Drew was slamming Punk into the announce table. Uh, upside down by his legs, that is. Drew got a chair taught and, and talked Seth into turning his back. And it was just, just turn around and let this happen. When he said that, I was like, oh, man, okay, that sounds like you're going to murder somebody. Uh, but Seth stopped him anyway. Punk makes a comeback. Rolls Drew up, but Seth isn't there to count because Seth is kind of sulking on the ropes like man I could have done it but I didn't that kind of thing Drew ducked way too early for Punk's high kick uh, it is what it is though Punk hit three shining wizards in the corner then he hit a gentle diving elbow for a two count Punk applies the anaconda device and that elbow drop wasn't to protect McIntyre so much it was to protect Punk uh, Punk applies the Anaconda Vice, but he uses that to get the bracelet back. The bracelet looks different than when he lost it. Because when, when he lost that bracelet first, I swear it was all white beads on it or something with letters. This was like rainbowed almost. Well, it was like blue-red. I think there's some, some whites on it. Um, and thicker than, than the one I remember. Oh, Bug Zapper. The bug has died. Uh, Drew hit the shining black that he calls the Claymore kick for a two count. This thing keeps auto-correcting. It's still a two count, period. Enter. Next one. When I go back up to do the reading, it says two counted. So he kicked out for a two counted. 
Sometimes it says two counter argument. Uh, I wish they'd hurry up and hit the ref so Seth can pick a side and or or mess up. Seth wears the bracelet that ticks and it ticks Punk off. I'm like, it was in the ring. Now I get it. You're supposed to pick the item up, put it in your pocket. He put it up and wore it. He picked it up and wore it. But he stopped the, the go to sleep or GTS that I'll call it for a little bit. And that's when Drew creates the incident that knocks uh, Seth down. So Punk hits the GTS for a two count and he berates the ref. Seth yells at Punk and catches a go to sleep. Punk gets the bracelet back but takes a low blow kick and then a shining black. Seth makes a very slow count and Drew picks up the win. After the match, Drew takes the bracelet once again and stands triumphant. All right. And that was a good match. I, I honestly enjoy watching Punk perform it. Uh, Drew, he looked really good. So, I, I don't... Not one of these matches, even though I might sound down on them, I, haven't, I have not felt like I wasted my time. You know, that's what I'm happy about. I'm looking at this stuff, and I do not feel like I'm wasting my time. I am enjoying it. I'm not loving it, but I'm enjoying it. I'm, my curiosity is still, what are they going to do? Where are they going to go? How, how are they going to perform in the ring? Yada, yada, yada. Because I'm keeping my guard up. Because as soon as the, all the stupid happens, I'm like, well, can't watch this too much. So... Now we get the WWE isolated world title match because it ain't it ain't it's not a real world belt. It's, it's how's it a world belt if it's only in WWE? You don't defend it against people from other companies. You know, just I'm hey I'm throwing that out there because Rick Flair defended his in Japan, lost it in Japan. He defended in Mexico, Puerto Rico, and you know Canada. You know he's been to, to China and and whatnot. You know. It, Rick Flair had been all over the place just as much as other NWA champions before before him. So, you know, world belt. This is, you know, in your own world. Call it a Jeff Jarrett belt, you know, because his theme song, My World, which I think is an awesome song anyway. Uh, so this is Gunther or Walter versus Damian Priest. Uh, oh, have I got anything to drink? Because this is, this is murderous. Oh, hey, ice in it. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. So this, this was a damn good match. Good storytelling. Had everything that I liked in it. Uh, so extremely physical match with heavy shots with the need to not back down. That is what I enjoyed most. They did not back down from each other. Um, chops with a few scratches juiced Gunther uh, on his chest and on the big screen. Eventually, he saw it. <laughs> he's looking up at the screen. And he's looking like, what the hell is that? You, I love seeing that look on the face. He looked confused. It all ran down him, but he can't tell. Priest gets the sit-out choke slam for a two count. Gunther hit a Western Lariat for a two count. Uh, with Priest beaten down, Finn Balor comes out to cheer him. And I wrote, allegedly. For minutes, Gunther just beats on Priest. Finn urges Priest to get up and takes a boot kick for it. Then eventually, Priest finds new life. So he's making his babyface come back. Priest hits the diamond death drop and then a sit out choke slam at the ropes where Finn put the foot on the ropes for Gunther. Commentary is stupidly shocked. If you're out there and you were stunned to see that, what is wrong with you? Finn comes to the ring for no reason, especially after the foreshadowing of Priest saying, you know, did you know something about it? And he's like, Dude, really? You're going to ask me? Finn! Finn! He's like, ah, oh, yeah, uh-huh. So, yeah. Priest sees the replay, which is good. And you can tell he's like, oh, believe this. Priest goes after Finn, uh, but gets snatched up into a sleeper choke. He's in that for a little bit. Priest fights back. I was like, ref, 
He's not fighting back intelligently. Then I look, the, the, the camera angle shifts. You can see Priest is still, you know, facially he's in it. So, okay, I was like, that's what the ref is looking at. Too bad the cameraman didn't allow us to see it because I'm like, he's not fighting back. You might as well just call it, bro. He's done. Him sleep, you know, but okay, he was he, he's still going. Priest fights back, uh, rolls back, got a two count, but that broke the hole. And this, to me, was the spot of the night. It even beats the stuff in the main event. When the hold was broken, Priest scrambles to the ropes, grabbing Finn by the neck. That right there, that is hatred. That is pain. That's betrayal. That's what that was. Priest showed all of that perfectly. Loved it. But that allowed Gunther to recover. Gunther hit the power bomb. And he applied the sleeper again. Scored the referee stoppage victory. I, th I, I just really, I was like, no, that right there, mm, chef's kiss. He got out, kick out. And he scrambled across that mat and got him by his neck. I had to show my daughter that. She was like, ooh, because it was like a horror movie to her. She, I was like, uh-huh. I'd have been like, oh, no, I'm dead. I just would have melted to the, to the floor if I was thin. Oh, my God, he got me. So that's what I would have been. Um, and plus, it would have been funny. I would have laughed later. Um, so now we get to the WWE Undisputed title match. See, you call it that. It's not the world. No, it's undisputed. And the fact there's another champion, it's kind of disputed. But, anyway, you know, ignore that. Ignore that. Bloodline rules, meaning it's the anything goes school of Sao Tome and martial arts. So, Solo Sokoa versus Cody Rhodes. Anybody got that reference? Sao Tome school of anything goes martial arts. Just, just put down the name of it. I'll just give you a, a like and a heart. I'll, I'll upvote. I'll, I'll give that a thumbs up and a heart. Just put down the name of where you think that came from. Um, let's see. Don't be looking it up on Wiki either. I see some of y'all typing. Don't look back. I'm right there. No, I'm not. So, okay. So, Cody walks his dog in the back. Oh, that's a pretty dog. And I thought, no, that dog is about 50% wolf. And he makes a stop at Arn Anderson. That guy got a pop out of me and the crowd. Um, he takes a custom-made entrance jacket from a dear friend and a stagehand rend renders him a, a big old helmet. And the crowd is just happy to see it for some reason. Um, then he goes towards the sound unit and his music hits. I'm like, I know what y'all was going for, but you know what? Nah. L.A. Knights was better. L.A. Knight went out talking, looking good, being cool. L.A. Knights was just better. He has better energy and stuff. Coming to that ring is a thing. You know, this was still good. I like this type of view. I love it. It's just, you know, going on which was better, L.A. Knights. Um, so, and I had to write, you know, perfect intro. Not a fan of the mask that he had on for a hot second. Still a damn good intro. To be fair, it was not as good as LA Knight. See, that's what I wrote. See, said it before I even got to part where I could read it. Anyway, so I had to note that Anderson told him uh, that a couple of friends were on the way. What? Now, see, why did it write could? It said couple. It's autocorrect. How do I turn this off? It's, I'm using a Libre Office. Anyway, okay. So opening parts are of this match are back and forth. Solo having counters for almost everything. Solo caught Cody's springboard and reversed into a dragon bomb for a two count. Problem. Cody's shoulder was off the mat and on Solo's shin, so that shouldn't have even been shouldn't have even been counted. So Solo hit a strong Sambo slam for a two count. A whole lot better than The Rocks. I ain't, I ain't even BS no that. Ain't, that ain't hate. No, it's, it's, it's better than The Rock. Uh, by now, Solo has hit three Samoan tossing drops. It's not Samoan drops. Because it's throwing Cody away. Cody's got to be two to three feet from him when he lands. But each time, Solo went for the pin. That's smart. That, that's good. 
Cody in the Tree of Woe, uh, Solo hit two off a of style headbutt. Cody evades a third, pulls himself up, hits a moonsault body attack. Okay. Cody, uh, Cody has a hope spot that was counted into a spinning STO for a two count. Um, Cody hit a rope run avalanche vertical suplex. That messed both of them up. I'm like, okay. You know, I'm, I'm watching. I'm like, when they all going to run in? I like that commentary. It was like, they're going to show up. You know everybody going to show up. So after a strike exchange, Cody hit the crossroads and G.O.D. hit the ring, attacking Cody. After a low angle magic killer, Cody kicks out on two. I am hoping... Uh, Tonga Loa's eye is okay. I hope that it's just maybe a few months he'll be able to. I hope it's not. I hope he ain't blind in it now. You know, there's there's quite a few one-eyed wrestlers out there. You just won't know it. So that so you know, there's still hope. Uh, Kevin's oh Kevin Owens music hit. Now when that music first hit, I wrote down oh Brock Lesnar's music, but he runs to the ring and I was like, all right, it sounded like Brock Lesnar's at first. That music hit. I was like, "Oh, Brock Lesnar, okay." Uh, this is a, now. This is a singles tornado tag match. <laughs> Randy Orton uh, then a, a theme hit, and he jogs to the ring. Uh, the faces have the advantage. What is up with this this, this program? Because you know what I just read, but it says when the auto credit was Randy Orton these hits, and he jobs to the ring. I just, uh, but everyone finishes for finishes on everybody. Cody hit crossroads for a two count. Uh, the faces chase off the heels. Cody throws the steps into the ring and hits Solo twice in the head. Where the hell is Jacob? I had to write that. Where the hell is Jacob? Cody tries again but gets speared for a two count. Cody hit two crossroads and Jacob arrives. Jacob hits. The Whisper in the Wind and the BME then places Solo on Cody for a two count. The fans sound hopeless. Jacob drained the hope from them. Good. Good. Because if he's there, Bloodline should win. Which goes to the next spot. Jacob hits the Superfly Splash on Cody, who's on the announce table. And then Jacob hollers in pain while clutching his leg. And I'm like, I'm looking at that leg. I'm like, man, if I see that leg flopping or bending at an angle, I am. And he's clutching at it. And I had to note, I am worried because Jacob was pissed. But Jacob was like a little warrior on that, on that floor. He was like a warrior because he was all hurt. You could tell he's hurt. I don't know if he's injured, but he's hurt. And he was telling him, go, go, beat him, beat him, kill him. I'm like, man, that's what I'm talking about. Right then, the fans right there get to hear that. People like me get to hear that. And, and then you can like try to believe that's what you want. That's what you need. That Jacob, I hope you're all right, man. Uh, solo, hit a, solo hit a splash for a two count. Music hits, Roman Reigns theme, babyface theme or something. I could barely hear it. But then he walks out. And then I had to write, Zimbo is still on point. Yo, we said he'd be back at this point in the first assumption. I, the first thing was going on, Roman was going to be back by SummerSlam and whatnot. We just didn't know for the situation at hand. We knew it was going to be all like this. So Roman pops Solo with a flying punch. And I always hated the way Roman's Superman punch looked. Um, but that popped the crowd. Then he hit the spear. Um... And then he looks to Cody. Roman leaves the ring. And I, and I had to write, damn Solo and damn Cody. This is the middle ground for Roman. Uh, Cody hit Crossroads and retains the title. You know, you can see, you can see it paying Roman to help Cody. I, there was a small point. I looked at Roman. He had this angle to him. I was like, he look, he remind me of Jay Briscoe. Um... Roman shirt says OTC, so I guess that stands for Original Tribal Chief. Um, SmackDown's business is about to pick up, you know, and if I had money on it, I'd be putting stock 
and TKO right now. I be putting some money on that because Friday coming. It's coming, everybody. So, 30 minute review. Cool. I ain't going to keep y'all. But, hey, this going to do it. This has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on WWE's SummerSlam 2024. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And I'll see you next time.